Hello everyone, welcome to Inside Japan. Um, I'm Adam Kasab here at Globis. And today, very delighted to welcome uh, Kanako Kamata, who is a founding member of a non-profit organization that focuses on communi community organizing for social change. So, uh, Kamata-san, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much for having me here. Welcome to Globis. Thank you. <laughs> um, Jumping straight in, Kamata-san, can you just explain a bit more about this, this idea of community organizing for social change? Can you just tell us what, what does that actually okay, mean? Okay, yeah, yeah, I think it's not familiar here in Japan, right. to, uh, to for sure. Uh, so community organizing uh, was born in U.S., but actually I think that there should be the community organizing history in Japan, but we, are, we haven't defined it as a community organizing. But So we, so basically the community organizing is identify um, the people's leadership and then develop the leadership in uh, develop leadership uh, of the people, especially ordinary people, and then as many as possible, and then build the power with the people, and then change the society what we want. That's the basic concept of the community organizing. Fantastic! Sounds really interesting. So you're looking to actually change society. Yeah, idea. by using the people, uh, by using the power of people. And that's slightly different from politics or like the political process? Or? Uh, it's slightly different. So uh, basically people think that their problem, their, the problem they are facing, and then they try to think about how to solve this problem with their power. So more like grassroots, kind grass of grassroots roots. level. Okay, interesting, yeah. fantastic. Well, I wish you a lot of luck with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much. And. I, I, I know you've just come back from America, or you yes, were in the um, States. Yes, sub, yeah, September last year. So I could say what took you to America, or but I'd like to ask you what brings you back to Japan exactly. then? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it, my original plan was to study the public policy and public administration in one year in mm. the U.S. and then spend one year working for nonprofit to gain the experience, actual right. experience, right. Uh, grassroots activities. Right. So. I followed my basic, the original plan, but uh, I was also suggested by my friend in school, Kennedy yeah. School, uh, to work for international institution. But uh, I realized my passion was not there, you know, like working for the international institution. Mm -hmm. I, my passion exists in grassroots activities. That's why I came back to Japan. Fantastic. Welcome yeah. back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And when you went to America, um, I mean, obviously you, you speak very good English, so I, th I think you're, you're kind of quite global also in, in your mindset. But when you went to America, were there any things that really surprised you about kind of American way of life, American people, or anything mm, like that? American way of people. Uh, I, really, I was very interested in American people like music. So everybody, uh, everywhere I go there, I go to the restaurant, bar, and anywhere, like music there. And then we organized the, um, uh, how can I say, the Halloween party. So I was oh, yeah. part of the student government in Kennedy School. And then we organized uh, the Halloween party. And then the one organizer said, we have to have music. And <laughs> it, was, it was so amazing to me. Because uh, I think we do like, we do love, we do love music in Japan. Yeah. But kind of like, I don't know. I think it's totally different perspective from Japanese culture and then American culture. As, and then I, I I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's interesting yeah. music. Okay. Yeah. And any, what, did anything kind of, was it was anything difficult for you living in living there with Americans? Anything you find difficult? Um, I have to say, food is one of the challenge for me. Um, the American food. <laughs> it's, uh, what? Because it's big portions. It's big or, portion. Right. Sometimes it's oily, and then uh, oily. you know it's ma many a lot of meat. And then less fish, and I seafood. See. Right. Yeah, but um, um, I could manage because they're also in Boston area. There are lots of vegetarian restaurants. Right. And then more like uh, seafood restaurants as well. So as I, you know, familiar with the Boston uh, city, I got to I, I solved that problem. But the first few months, I lost weight actually. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and yeah. you like natto maybe or not? I do. Could you get natto in Boston? I, yeah, I can get. So I we can. did have the Korean Japanese supermarket. I see. And then, yeah, I found it and then that changed my life. <laughs> and you started putting on weight again. Good. Yes. <laughs> okay, coming back to Japan, um, something you love, something you hate about Japan? 
Um, something I love, uh, I love the unique concept um, based on a rich culture. Like, uh, how can I say? So, I think the Japanese people understand, or are, are, how can I say? Uh, Japanese people appreciate the nature mm. or all the life. And then Japanese tend to, cons uh, I think Japanese consider all lives, I mean, any creatures equally, like even uh, insects or even uh, animals and mm. the birds. I think we treat the life equally, that kind of concept that they like. Um, that we don't really think that we conquer nature. We want to live together with nature. You know, we are lived by the earth. I think that kind of concept I really like, and it's different from Western concept of thinking. So that's the one of the, my realization. Um, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something maybe you don't like so much about Japan then. Oh, okay. Something yeah. I don't like. Yeah. Um, so I don't like the people as how can I, less self-confident. So they uh, don't really, you know, realize what their their strengths. Their you know, uh, yeah. So that's less self-confident. Confident. confident. That's, that's what I don't like, mm, I think. Interesting. And maybe yeah. it's your, your work in uh, community organizing could actually help that, right? When I you think help so, people that's, discover yeah. their own yeah. leadership, right? That's my hope. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, talk, talking a bit more about your job um, with, with the nonprofit organization, can you just te tell us a bit more in a bit more detail? What is it, what is it exactly you're going to be doing? Uh, so now we are in the process to start up the new organization, new mm. non-profit organization to mm. teach community organizing and also want, we want to practice community organizing in the field. So we want to teach the community organizing for the non-profit sectors and also for the business sector who wants to, um, how can I say, who wants to uh, empower people and then change the, change the society with the people. Um, so that's our hope, and then we uh, also want to uh, practice the uh, organizing in the field. Like, so we were thinking to go to the Tohoku area, Northeast mm. area. It's, I think that the area really needs, uh, you know, people involved in the community, and mm. then try to improve the community. So we are thinking uh, uh, to do a practice the community organizing, and uh, we want. I think we need to increase the people to understand the community organizing and teach and also practice all over the Japan. So mm. we are finding uh, many people, we are, we, are find, we are trying to find, look for the people who are interested in learning and practicing and teaching. So I don't know if I can say that we are in the process of launching the nonprofit organization. So if, you know, um, if anybody interested in, please contact me, and okay. then I hope we can talk about it. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I might be interested myself <laughs> in volunteering. So it, so it sounds thank really you. amazing what thank you're doing. You. And I really wish you um, this kind of success. So thank you so much. Um, in, in that, uh, you know, following on from that, then, actually, what, what do you see as the challenges here in Japan to you setting up this yes. organization and actually being successful? Yeah? Mm -hmm. What sort of challenges do you see here? Mm, I think that one of the challenges are uh, the funding, uh, because it's diff very different from the U.S. environment. So in the U.S., there are many uh, foundations, huge donors who want to donate money to right. non-profit. Mm -hmm. But here in Japan, we don't have, we started this kind of uh, culture, I don't know, we, we do have, but mm -hmm. it's not like in the U.S. So I think, uh, I, my hope is to change this kind of uh, way to use the money also, you know, uh, to change the way to use the money for not only for pay the tax, but only also donate money based on your value, based on your passion. So that's my hope. So For individuals you mean, or companies? Individual and also company too. I see. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, what keeps you passionate and fired up? Where, where do you get your passion to actually do this? <laughs> Starting something from scratch takes a lot of energy and, and determination. Uh, I see. I hope I can make it short, but um, I think it comes from my mother actually. So my what? mother was Mm, kind of, he, she was a basketball player and she's very uh, enjoyable. I mean, she's very, sometimes tease, teasing me, uh, people a lot. And then she's a very cheerful person. But uh, when I was five, she got, she, she broke her leg. And mm -hmm. then she 
uh, and but she in the same time she had to take care of my me and I was five and then my brother was one and then all the stress made her really stressed out mm. and then she ended up uh, the you know the got the depression mm. like a depression disease and then uh, we didn't know that what happened to her because uh, like 30 years ago uh, maybe depression was not well understood in the Japanese society and so that why she was blamed her she was uh, blamed by the family you know you were lazy and then mm -hmm. she couldn't say she couldn't say anything uh, about that and then uh, so and then she couldn't develop her cap capacity because of her disease mm -hmm. and you know uh, so since then when I see the people who lost power who is who feel powerless who cannot voice uh, their opinion. I feel like I, I have to do something. That's the yeah, my passion. Wow. My yeah, coming. My passion coming from. Wow, very interesting. Thank mm. you for sharing that. <laughs> so you you can see your mother was kind of misunderstood in misunderstood society, in society and kind of blamed for yeah. something that wasn't really her fault. Yeah, and then also she lost the power. I mean, yeah, yeah she's she's still surviving. You know, she, how can I say she's still living, but. Um, yeah, she lost hope to leave because of that. Yeah, so. Fantastic, thank mm. you. Okay, um, let me ask you then. <clears throat> a lot of our viewers are maybe, maybe they're already in Japan, mm -hmm. and maybe they're, having, they're struggling a bit living here, working with Japanese people, and some people are maybe thinking of coming here. So, mm -hmm. would you have any tips for them about how to get on well with Japanese These people? people? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that um, to have the genuine curiosity to the people and then right. also uh, the culture and then also the respect the culture and try to understand the culture and try to uh, try new things in the country is very helpful. Um, so like for me, like uh, I haven't never been to Africa, so I I don't have any. I didn't mm. have any good understanding about Africa, but when I went to the Boston, I met many African people. Mm. I had ma I had many African friends, so I was invited to a party and then I was invited to dinner. And it's so totally different food <laughs> and culture, but it really um, the, made my eyes really open and yeah. then got new perspective. And right. then as I tried to, as I was absorbing the African culture, the people like me. And I like, yeah. I, I getting start. I I started liking people. So it's yeah. kind of yeah. That can actually be difficult because I know sometimes people shut down right yeah. when they're in a strange environment. They actually close off. Yes, that's true. But you managed to stay open when you were there. Yeah, be open-minded. Yeah, that's yeah. really. How did you do that? I stay, kind of stay open. Mm, like. I think the curiosity yeah. helps me. You know, want to learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. That's and maybe would you give that advice to Japanese people about how to get on better with? Foreigners or non-Japanese, uh -huh. yeah, same sort of. Advice. Yeah, same sort of. But uh, I think the Japanese, um, how can I say, be explicit what you know we are thinking. As because Japanese culture, you don't have to say that much right. about their what they are feeling, what they. Right. So, but I think if you express what you are thinking in your mind, right. the people understand more about you. Right. I think that yeah, and then it helps you to. Yeah, understand each other. Thank I you. Think. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. So. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, another question I, I always ask um, on this series is about Japanese historical figures or actors or authors or artists, anyone like that that you admire and why? Why? Okay. Uh, I admire Ryoma Sakamoto. Oh, um, so he cool. was the um, kind of activist in the Meiji Restoration yeah. era. Uh, so why I like him is uh, he doesn't he didn't have any authority or he didn't have any position in the government or any uh, uh, he was he came from the lower level of the samurai family mm. uh, he's half farmer half samurai actually um, so, but he exercised leadership in leading the Japan to open the country and change the political scheme. Mm. Um, I, I also admire him because he was interested in any position in the government, in new government. And then uh, he, he just genuinely wants to 
uh, make Japan exciting company, exciting country, and then want to give the equal opportunity to the old people. That's why I like him. Maybe in a hundred years' time, Kamatasan, someone will be asking the same question, uh -huh. and your name will be mentioned <laughs> as someone who really changed Japan in a positive way. Uh, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's hope so. Hope so. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, if you were, you know, you lived in America for t I think two years, right? Mm -hmm. Studying there, you did your masters yes. in, in America. So, uh, if you were to take the strengths of America, American mm -hmm. society, with the strengths of Japan, and mm -hmm. make like a cultural superpower. What would you take from each side? Uh, I really like the positive attitude in the U.S. The people think, that, yeah, people think, perceive the things very positively, and the people praise people, each other, <laughs> and cheer up each other. Right. And then also, pe uh, people appreciate uh, the person who stand up, you know, who speak up. Right. Um, you know, and mm. I think I really like that culture and encouraging people to take action, you know, mm. yeah, moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then what I like in Japan, I mean, is like we are very good at crafting something like a saddle or, mm. you know, we have lots of dough. I mean, the way of crafting something yeah. and really, um, how can I say, uh, ripen the skills or you know, um, skills and knowledge. So, I don't know, how, how can I, so you would think, how, how can I create a superpower with that? Or maybe creating the, some positive way of crafting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Craft a positive way, <laughs> I don't know. That definitely sounds like a superpower to me, <laughs> yeah, a culture superpower. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and this is a new question, actually, and I know okay. we, we mentioned before, so it's not, it's not like suddenly thrown on you, but um, I think from now on I want to ask this question in, in these, doing these interviews. Um, can you share, you know, a kind of a very big challenge you faced in your life, maybe the biggest one so mm -hmm. far, and, you know, what was it? How did you overcome it? And yeah. maybe what did you learn going through that challenge? Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Um, so my biggest challenge exists in internally myself like I have to overcome myself that's that was my biggest challenge what mm. I mean is um, so I have like kind of traumatic event when I was young so I didn't go to the good college as expected my family so I I went to the college but it was fine but it's not you know I couldn't reach the expectation and then I actually couldn't go through the um, the exam. Uh, I, I was so stressed out by the mm. exam, so I choose to uh, enter the college not having the exam. I see. So that really, um, how can I say, that really disappointed me. Mm. And I couldn't believe myself, my strengths, my capability to, um, be because of this, uh, you know, failure. Mm. I, I, I should not say failure, but you yeah. know, kind of, yeah. So, but, um, so it's been, I think it's been remaining for 10 years or some, some years. Um, but uh, I think that certain point, and also uh, many people helped me to overcome this, because I've been changed a lot from when I was 70 years old, but yeah. I didn't realize how much I changed. Right. But many people pointed out me, you made a huge uh, efforts to change your, your, you know, myself, Yourself. and mm. then so that really helped me, and then I think uh, everybody making a choice and then making, try to move forward your life. So my learning is you are changing every day yeah. and then you should not be afraid with the ghost or, you know. Ghost of your past. Ghost of your past. I think that's my learning. Yeah. Thank you, Kamala san that, It's very nice <laughs> for you to share because, you know, it, people don't tend to share difficult uh, experiences like that, but, yeah. but thank you very much for sharing. And, and I think it takes a lot of courage to talk like that. <laughs> shows me, yeah, definitely you're a very strong person. So. Thank, you. thank you. So thank you very much, Commander Sun. Very last question. Um, final message to our viewers. Anything you want to say about anything you like? Final message. <laughs> thank you. Um, for first of all, thank you uh, for uh, raising the point I am courageous. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm courageous is um, I 
discovered my passion and then also pursue my passion now. Uh, so I just want to say uh, I want you, everybody to discover your passion and then you know, follow your passion and pursue your passion. That's my last message. What a great final message. Thank you so much. <laughs> Come on, it's been really nice having you here with us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you Wonderful, much. wonderful interview. And um, wish you the best of luck with your uh, community organizing for social change project. Mm -hmm. And any viewers out there who want to get involved, please contact her. I think maybe there'll be a link on the website. So please do that. I'm definitely interested, so I'd, I'd like to kind of find out more. And uh, thank you very much. You've been watching Inside Japan. I think this is the number 21. Um, and thank you very much. I'm Adam Kasaba Globis. See you next time.